Stasis is defined as arrest on stopping of bleeding and when blood vessel is injured, the injury initiates a series of reactions occurs in three stages, that is vasoconstriction, latent blood formation, and coagulation of blood. So, uh, immediately after the injury, the blood vessel constrict and decrease the loss of blood from the damaged portion. When the blood vessels are cut, the endothelium is damaged and conagen is exposed. So, platelet adhere to this conagen and gets activated. The activated platelet secretes serotonin and other vasoconstrictor substances which causes constriction of blood vessels. So, this adherence of platelet to the conagen is accelerated by von Willebrand factor. The vessel is disrupted. Uh, platelet escape from the vessels, bind to conagen and other extracellular matrix components at the site of injury and that partially activated. However, long-term uh, hemostasis requires that the platelet plug be stabilized by measure of fibrin formed by the action of thrombin. So the process of thrombin generation is initiated by the T factor bearing cells which are exposed to the blood at the site of injury. The factor 7a and tissue bearing factor complex catenize the activation of both factor 10 and factor 9. The factor 10a uh, formed on the tissue factor bearing cell interact interacts with the, its cofactor 5a to generate a small amount of thrombin on the tissue factor bearing cells. So, uh, this activated platelet renews a platelet specific form of factor 5 that is partially activated and can immediately form prothrombinous complexes with factor 10a that has been activated on the tissue factor bearing cells. At that point, the small amount of thrombin produced on tissue factor bearing cells can interact with platelet and factor 8 and uh, factor 8 and von Willebrand factor to initiate the hemostatic process that ultimately enmeshes the initial penetrated plug in a stable fibrin plug, which is also known as the secondary hemostasis. Amplification of procoagulant signals by thrombin generated on the tissue factor bearing cells. It plays a key role by priming the clotting system uh, for subsequent burst of penetrated surface. Uh, thrombin generation by activated factor 5, factor 8, and factor 11 on the platelet surface. Factor 9 activated both on the tissue factor bearing cells and by the platelet surface, factor 11A uh, binds to factor 8A on the platelet surface to assemble factor 9A, factor 8A TNS complexes. So, once the platelet TNS complexes uh, uh, is assembled, factor 10 from the plasma is activated to factor 10A on the platelet surface, uh, and factor 10A then associated with factor 5 to form a prothrombinous complex and produce a burst of thrombin generation, and it helps in the coagulation and the stopping of the uh, blood from the uh, injury site. So, uh, we don't want uh, coagulation to happen on the uh, uh, unappropriate sites. It should happen in, in only appropriate sites when there is a tissue injury. So, antithrombin and tissue factor pathway inhibitor is an important role in it. So, factor 10A on surface is relatively protected from inhibition by antithrombin and fact tissue factor pathway inhibitor. So antithrombin can bind to heparin sulfates on endothelial cell surfaces. Plasma TFPI can bind to endothelial cells and another form of TFPI and TFPI beta is tethered to endothelial surfaces by glycosine, phosphatidine, inositol linkages. Tokenization to the endothelial surface allows this protease inhibitor to specifically play an antithrombotic role by inhibiting activated factors that diffuse to or are inappropriately formed on the endothelium. A deficiency of antithrombin is associated with a significant thrombotic tendency. Coagulation inhibitors are critical control mechanism, limiting and localizing factor 10 activity and thereby thrombin generation to a site of injury.
सो प्रोटीन सी एंड प्रोटीन एस आर विटामिन के डिपेंडेंट फैक्टर सिंथेसाइज बाई हिपैटिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटीनिकोटी
For the same time, there were marked decrease in the naturally occurring anticoagulant, protein C and antithrombin 3, and NPAR2 microglobin. These changes impacted the patients were hypercoagulant in the post operative unit period. Thromboinastrometry leaving a continuous increase in clot firmness and MEA demonstrate an increase in penetrant aggregation on post operative day 6. And there were no significant change in factor 5, factor 10, and alpha 2 antiplasmin on penetrant aggregability. This physiology, uh, which is important for forming a, a clot, you'll notice over here that fibrinogen, one villebrands, and factor 8 have increased uh, from day 2 post operative. That means you're going to become pro thrombotic. Okay. And you're also seeing that there's a marked decrease in the anticoagulant, natural anticoagulant, which is protein C and antithrombin along with alpha 2 microglobulin. So this means that the patient is going to be pro thrombotic in this phase from day two. And you will notice that the text shows increase in clot firmness, that is a tendency towards clotting, and also the platelet aggregation is increased, which means that the platelets are very um, hyper reactive. And that's why uh, we are very keen that eight hours post-op if there's no bleeding and if I don't know about the neurosurgery and uh, uh, deep abdominal surgeries uh, where there are raw areas uh, I understand that that could be an area of concern but this is the reason why we want to be aggressive uh, from uh, eight hours post-op this is the and we don't give anything for the first eight hours for the simple reason that uh, the fibrinolytic activity is high at that point of time because whatever clots have been formed during surgery uh, nature is slowly, slowly lysing them. If you give an anticoagulant, the bleeding increases and then you end up in trouble. That's the physiology behind eight hours post-op uh, surgery. Mm -hmm.